So welcome to another video, The One Good Road here. Today I'm going to be giving you a review on some of the best apps that I use for camping. So personally, right off the bat, I don't like to download other camping apps, like specific apps. I don't think that they provide me with useful information and I think that their databases are actually pretty limited and change from country to country. So personally, what I do when I'm looking for campsites or nice campgrounds is I use traditional navigation apps and they provide me on the map plenty of data for what and where campsites are. So when on Google Maps, one of the simplest ways to find campsites is simply to go to it and type in camp sites or campgrounds is another one and then it will give you all of the data on campsites. That's one of the simplest ones, right? Everybody knows this one. It's probably the most traditional way to find campsites. I am going to zoom in on one I know in the area. Um, for example, we have one not far in the mountains. This is the Pyrenees Mountains. This sort of one is baked into an app that most people use, right? Everybody uses Google Maps when you're on navigation. I think it's one of the best in the business, I would say. And you're presented with, you know, plenty of different reviews, um, which is a very big network. It has plenty of photos about the campsites. And then you, this one's even trying to suggest the pricing. I think that Google Maps is not very good at predicting the price. It's best to just load up their websites and then find out it that way. So this is for paid campgrounds though. What do you do when you're trying to find something a bit off the radar and not marked on the map. So one of the other tricks I do still within Google Maps is I'll switch to satellite mode and then I'll zoom in on certain areas that I think are possible for camping. Now this requires a bit of skill and knowledge from very various years of very many years of my travels around the world. I, I've been able to um, sort of discern whether somewhere is a good campsite without going to it. So one of the features you can use is Google Street View to try and find good places to camp. Um, for example, there's a field here, it's not far from here. And we go onto Google Street View. You can literally look at the surroundings. Okay, could I pitch my tent somewhere in this area? And it's worth also researching whether you're allowed to wild camp. Most people wild camp, which is great. Um, but for example, in the country I'm in right now, France, you cannot wild camp. So if we scroll up to Scotland, for example, the Cangorms, which is a big national park here, you can definitely wild camp within, in fact, you can wild camp everywhere in Scotland and it's okay, um, generally. I'm, it's like a right to roam, basically. So let's say I will go on Google Street View again, and this one is literally somebody has walked in the mountains there. I'll look at Google Street View. I'll put the pin on the blue line there. Zoom in. And this one's actually in winter, so it's pretty cold. And you can see it's pretty steep. So here would be a rubbish place to camp. You want to probably go down to the river, find somewhere more flat. You'll have to think about insects and bugs and stuff like that. But you're in a tent, so it'll be fine. So that's one of the ways I use Google Maps to try and find campsites, especially for free, because I don't think camping should be paid unless you get you know, certain animities like shower, bathroom, kitchen, stuff like that, I think, then it's fair, I think, to pay. But if you don't get stuff like that, I think it's really not worth it. Another app that I use is still another navigation app, and it's called OpenStreetMaps. Now, this one has a lot of a, it's got a high learning curve to understanding how this app works. But once you nail it, it has a lot of features baked into it. So once, once you download the app, which is for free to use online, and then they have certain offline maps that you might want to research as well. One of the things I use is I go straight to the top here. I'm not going to review this app. If you want to have a look at a review, I'll leave a link over here. Um, but what you do is you top, you tap, Top, you tap on the top uh, left here, you load this little globe, and then there's a POI overlay here. So you load this, and then you can either choose accommodation, 
that's one of the best ways to try and find places to stay. But if you're looking for campgrounds, then you should go to search and type in the type in campgrounds or campsites is another one. So here you go, you get campsites. It's worth just researching. You know, if you don't do the research, you won't find it really. Um, and the way that open this this app, OpenStreetMaps, uh, or o OSM and is the name of the app, and the way that they find their information is on OpenStreetMaps. So that that is uh, like a community based soft or, or it's a community based mapping service, which is very it's like a branch of not using uh, Google Maps. Basically, it's an alternative. So I've typed in campsite, then I click show on the map. And then it will bring up campsites, which to me are showing me all of the little ones that are not maybe marked uh, as businesses on Google Maps, but they are marked on this map for some reason. Sometimes it's worth just using different mapping services and having a look. Then when you find one, you can either ring it up or you can try and go there and just see if it works. I always just try and wing it or I, I call them up and just try and find it. So that's one of the ones I use, and I've downloaded this region offline. Uh, and that is one of the ways I look for campsites. And you can also type in refuge in this bar as well. Refuge. Again, very high steep learning curve on this app. But once you get past that and you, you can use the app on a more daily basis, it's got so much features baked into it. Uh, there's no point in having a dedicated camping app. I think it's really ridiculous. Um, this one shows you all the, the, the ones that are really hard to find. And this is in the, the Pyrenees mountain, mountains, for example. Uh, there's one here. I think we've actually stayed at one of these nearby. This is a refuge. So at a refuge, they're like these little huts in the mountains, right? And then you can just pitch your tent next to them, or you can go in the refuge, depending on how clean it is and stuff like that. So that's one of the apps I use. Have a look at it. If you find that that has too high of a learning curve, the one that really fits in between these two apps is Windy Maps. Now, Windy Maps is a new app that I've been recently using. I, I've actually made a whole review on it if you want to have a look at that. But this app, I think, has a lot of potential. It's very clean, nice UI. It uses offline street maps again, which is really nice. And it uses open street maps. I've got to get myself out of this feature. Hang on just one second. Close, get out of that. Right. So the way that it works is it's still online right now. So I, I get all of the mapping service again. And then you can either go to settings down here, offline maps, download some of those. And then if you want to look at POIs, you go, I think, into the route planning. No, let's go into search. That's the right area to go search. And then you click on accommodation and they will search for um, in their category of what accommodations are okay so they have a pretty good database again it'll slowly update as we move around the map like this a bit like booking.com booking.com has a very similar feature and this shows me where stuff is on the map then let's say if I like the look of this one I tap on it and it gives me information about the place um, also this this uh, app has people writing reviews which are not I think attached to Google Maps this one the reviews are coming from booking.com so they try to attach to that database and find places for you again it shows you I mean they also try and show you the weather prediction while in that in that region for the next few days which is pretty neat and windy maps is actually from a company called windy and they are a weather service they are they run they have a weather app which is really amazing but they've made this whole mapping app as a separate thing and it's it's really good i highly recommend downloading this one and having a look at how you can find this is actually a hotel so that's not the right thing let's tap on the, a campsite this one's a small farm um but you can try and ring them up and ask for a place to pitch your tent as well you got to be creative when you're uh, out on the road really and and you can probably search for RV campsites as well and I think this app is probably the best design and it tries to search on many different databases and have a go at using it and see what it uh, see what if it works for you 
So yeah, those are the three apps that I use. Again, they are navigation apps or mapping services, but I think that that is the best way to find campsites and just general word of mouth. Go and ask a local when you're taking a hike. I, I need to find a good place to pitch my tent. Where would you recommend? They might even recommend your house, who knows? Anyway, that's it. Subscribe if you have any other suggestions for apps that you use. I'm interested in hearing them, so leave a comment down below. And that's, that's it. Thanks for watching.